Welcome back. What we're going to look at today is one of the most scary atoms known to man. We're going to look at plutonium. So I consider myself very lucky to be able to work with plutonium. It's not something you're going to find around in any laboratory, uh, but we do have a sample here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our sample and discuss just how active it is and just how much plutonium we've actually got here in the laboratory. So I always find it spine chilling that I get the opportunity to work with plutonium. Um, it was uh, synthesized, it was actually made in a laboratory in California back in about 1938-1940 by uh, Glenn Seaborg and a team there who um, actually had to bombard uranium with neutrons. And uh, if you bombard uranium with neutrons, you make uh, an isotope of uranium. Uh, that neutron then decayed via uh, beta emission and made neptunium. And then another neutron decayed in neptunium and made plutonium. If you know how that uh, sequence works, um, in fact, the atomic number goes up the periodic table because if you've got a neutron decaying, it decays into a proton and releases an electron. That's the beta particle. So let's now have a look at our plutonium sample. So I said I find plutonium spine chilling and I'll give you a few reasons why I say that. Firstly, before 1939, not a single atom existed on Earth. Um, it was uh, manufactured uh, in a particle accelerator. So um, it was sort of manufactured an atom at a time. And I imagine that the first bit of plutonium that they extracted, perhaps a few micrograms of plutonium, uh, must have been worth an unimaginable amount of money. And in fact, the amount of plutonium I've got here I'm, I'm totally guessing, but back in the 1940s, early 1940s, would probably have been worth millions and millions of dollars. Um, there's rather a lot of it around now, so it's not quite so valuable. Not that you can buy it on the open market, of course. This also uh, is the material um, that was used in the second atomic bomb. Uh, plutonium 239 uh, was used in the Fat Man bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki uh, with absolutely uh, devastating consequences. And perhaps there's still plutonium out there um, emitting alpha radiation, which is extremely dangerous uh, if breathed in. It can, uh, the dust can cause lung cancer. So what I thought we'd do is look at just how much plutonium we've got here and whether we can consider that to be really dangerous or not. So let's have a look at our plutonium source. And I'm going to use all the usual safety precautions. So it comes in a labelled box and inside there is a little lead container. So I'm going to open the lead container and take out our plutonium source. And it sits in a little cup and I'm going to hold that at some distance away from the Geiger-Muller tube and the whole system is called the Geiger counter. Here's the uh, scalar timer, the thing that counts how many uh, alpha particles uh, hit the uh, Geiger-Muller tube. So um, not much happening here because we know it's alpha. So let's get close. And you can hear the counts due to the plutonium source. Now, plutonium has quite a long half-life, so um, this sample should be really as active as it was when we first bought it, which must have been a very long time ago. Some of these sources are quite old. Um, and if it's alpha radiation, um, it's not going to reach my hands, but we still take all the usual safety precautions. But this metal has some very, very interesting properties. And as I said, I consider it to be quite a scary material if you don't know how to deal with it properly. So I'm gonna put it back in its box and put the little lead lid back on and close the box and um, in a few minutes I have to sign that back in. I've signed it out and I have to sign it back in and lock it up in a locked safe um, so it can't be lost so it's accounted for at all times. So what we'll do now is discuss just how much plutonium I've been working with and what the possible risks are. So 
So let's have a little discussion now about our plutonium cup source. Um, they started manufacturing these for schools and education establishments back in the 1960s. And every time I use this, I wonder, where did the plutonium come from that's in this source? Did it come from one of the early UK nuclear reactors? Um, or did it get brought in from America, from the um, weapons programme there? I've no idea. Uh, but with a half-life of just over 24,000 years, we're never going to need to replace that source. And maybe the plutonium was put in the source many, many years ago. But I've actually no idea where it originally came from. But what we're going to do now is have a look at just how much plutonium we've got here. And uh, we can discuss whether it's safe to use. So just how much plutonium is in this little cup source? Well, the other night I did a little bit of a calculation, a sort of back of the envelope calculation, and um, I tried to work out how many atoms were in there. Uh, I've got it written down on a bit of paper here because I'm bound to forget. Um, but these uh, sources that we have in schools are 0.1 microcuries of activity. OK, so 0.1 millionths of a curie. Now, that's an old fashioned unit uh, which begs the question, one curie. What were the levels that Marie Curie was working with at the time if the count rate was measured in curies then? Millions of times higher. Um, we count in becquerels now, counts per second, and um, we can use the... Uh, Counts per second from this source, or at least what it's meant to be, um, the Geiger counter and the Geiger-Muller tube are not all that efficient. And we can use the decay constant for plutonium-239 to work out just how many atoms we've got in our source. And then we can work out how many grams of plutonium-239 we've been working with. So, as I say, I did my sort of back of the envelope calculation the other night and um, I worked out that there's a vast number of atoms in our little cup source. There's about four times 10 to the 15 atoms. That's a massive number of atoms. But you can use that to work out how many grams there is. Um, you know how many atoms there are in an Avogadro number, and an Avogadro number of plutonium-239 atoms would be 239 grams. So, 4 times 10 to the 15 atoms is 2 micrograms of plutonium-239. So, it comes out at about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 grams of plutonium. So, that's approximately 2 millionths of a gram. So, our little cup source sealed inside it has a very large number of atoms of plutonium. But, in fact, that represents a very tiny mass indeed. So it's very difficult to get information about just how dangerous plutonium is, but we take all the usual handling precautions. But we had, uh, you know, millionths of a gram of plutonium. It's probably plutonium oxide, I think, um, inside a metal disc, and then it's uh, sort of encapsulated by very thin metal foils and then put in that little cup holder. So, um, millionths of a gram. Well, there's some information that says that one gram of plutonium, or maybe one gram of plutonium oxide, if it was spread out into the environment, would kill millions and millions of people, or at least uh, induce um, cancers. So um, the risks, as I say, are difficult to find out, and there's not a lot of study being done on it, or at least not published. Um, but I think the biggest risks appear to be from dust. So we've got a sealed source, but if you were to breathe in plutonium oxide dust, that would lodge in your lungs and the alpha decay uh, would slowly but surely damage the DNA in your cells and would almost certainly bring on a lung cancer. If it travels around the body, it will probably lodge in the bones and continue to irradiate you with alpha radiation. But the bit that I find interesting is, regardless of the fact it has a very long half-life, our sample had that huge number of atoms in it. What was it? Something like 2 times 10 to the 17 atoms. 
And even though it's got a long half-life, that tiny speck, those micrograms, can give out over its lifespan, um, not over the half-life, but over its lifespan, that many alpha particles, which would be a huge amount of radiation, but over a very long length of time. So let's very quickly discuss the uses of plutonium, and there are a few of them. Obviously, one of the uses is to have very, very small samples and use it to teach students how to handle radioactive materials safely and to make the point that if you know what you're doing, they're perfectly safe to work with. And of course, our source is completely sealed, but we do need to know where it is at all times. Um, another use is in nuclear power for generating power in nuclear power stations. And uh, one of the most sinister uses, as you well know, um, is in nuclear weapons. But um, a really interesting use is in thermoelectric generators. Because uh, the plutonium is decaying and giving out alpha particles that have got kinetic energy, there's some heat released. And if we can have a rather larger amount of plutonium giving out a huge number of alpha particles, we can generate some heat and we can use that heat to then electrically, um, or at least an electrical device, produce electricity. This is without raising steam. And so this is used in sort of small capsulated devices to provide power for satellites, especially satellites that are not going to be uh, sun-facing at all times, or maybe going to Jupiter and beyond in the solar system, where uh, the energy on the solar panels would be too small to power the satellite, so it has a little plutonium uh, in generator in it that produces the electricity needed to power the satellite. Um, it begs the question, uh, what happens if uh, the uh, satellite gets destroyed on launch when a rocket blows up? Um, hopefully um, they can go and find the uh, thermoelectric generator and recover the plutonium rather than it being spread all over the environment. But I have no idea what actually happens there. So I hope you enjoyed our look at plutonium metal. Um, as I say, I feel very, very honoured to be able to get the chance to work with this material even if I'm working with only a few millionths of a gram of it, it's still a huge number of atoms. So I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.